Now, fair Hippolyta, our nuptial hour draws on a pace. Four happy days bring in another moon. But oh, me thinks how slow these old moon wanes. She lingers my desires. Four days will quickly steep themselves in night. Four nights will quickly dream away the time. And then the morn, like to a silver bowl you bent in heaven, shall behold the night of our solemnities. The politics. I wooed thee with my sword, and won thy love, doing thee injuries. But I will wed thee in another key. With pomp, with, with triumph, and, and with, with reveling! Thing. Happy be Theseus, our renowned duke. Thanks, good Aegeus. What's the news with thee? Full of vexation come I, with complaint against my child, my daughter, Hermia! Stand forth, Demetrius. My noble lord, this man hath my consent to marry her. Stand forth, Lysander, and my gracious duke. This man hath bewitched the bosom of my child. Thou, thou, Lysander, thou hast given her rhymes and interchanged love tokens with my child. With cunning hast thou filched my daughter's heart, turned her obedience which is due to me to stubborn harshness. And my gracious duke, be it so, she will not hear before your grace consent to marry with Demetrius. 
I beg the ancient privilege of Athens. As she is mine, I may dispose of her, which shall be either to this gentleman or to her death, according to our law immediately provided in that case. What say you, Hermia? Be advised for mate. To you, your father should be as a god. Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. So is Lysander. In himself he is. But in this kind, wanting your father's voice, the other must be held the worthier. I would my father looked, but with my eyes. Rather your eyes must with his judgment look. I do entreat your grace to pardon me. I know not by what power I am made bold, but beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may befall me in this case if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Either to die the death or to abjure forever the society of men. Therefore, for Hermia, question your desires, whether if you yield not to your father's choice, you can endure the livery of a nun. So will I grow. So live, so die, my lord, ere I will yield my virgin passions up. Take time to pause. Relent, sweet Hermia, and Lysander, yield thy crazy title to my certain right. You have our father's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermia's. Do you marry him? Scornful Lysander. True, he has my love, and what is mine my love shall render him, and she is mine, and all my right of her. I do estate unto Demetrius. I am, my lord, as well derived as he, as well possessed. My love is more than his. My fortune to every way is fairly ranked. I am beloved of beauteous Hermia. Why should not I then prosecute my right? Demetrius, I'll avouch it to his head, made love to Nadar's daughter, Helena, and won her soul. And she, sweet lady, dotes. Devoutly dotes, dotes in idolatry upon this spotted and inconstant man. I must confess, as I've heard so much. Demetrius, come, and come, Aegeus, you shall go with me. I have some private schooling for you both. For you, fair Hermia, look, you arm yourself to fit your fancies to your father's will or else the law of Athens yields you up, which by no means we may extenuate, to death or to a vow of single life.
down there, my love. Why is your cheek so pale? How chance the roses there do fade so fast? We might for want of rain, which I could well between them from the tempest of my eyes. Aye, me. Thought that I could ever read, could ever tell by tale or history. The course of true love never did run smooth. Then let us teach our child patience. A good persuasion. Therefore, hear me, Hermia. I have a widow aunt, a dowager of great revenue. From Athens is her house remote, seven leagues there. Gentle Hermia, may I marry thee? To that place, the sharp Athenian law cannot pursue us. If thou lovest me, then, steal forth thy father's house tomorrow night. And there, in the wood, <laughs> a league without the town, will I stay for thee. My good Lysander, I swear to thee by Cupid's strongest bow, in that same place thou hast appointed me. Tomorrow, truly will I be with thee. <laughs> <sighs> me, me, my. Is all our company here? You were best to call them generally, man by man, according to the script. Uh, here is a scroll with every man's name on it, who is thought fit through all Athens to appear in our interlude before the Duke and Duchess on his wedding day at night. First, good Peter Quince, say what the play treats on, then read the names of the actors, and so grow to a point. Marry, our play is the most lamentable comedy and most cruel death of Pyramus and Thisbe. A very good piece of work, I assure you, and a merry. Now, uh, call forth your actors by the script. Masters, uh, uh, spread yourselves. Answer as I call you, uh, Nick Bottom the Weaver. Ready. Name what part I am for and proceed. Nick Bottom, you are set down for Pyramus. What is Pyramus, a uh, lover or a tyrant? A lover that kills himself most gallant for love. Ah, oh, that will ask some tears in the true performing of it. If I do it, let the audience look to their eyes. I will move storms. I will condole in some measure <laughs> to the I... rest. Yet my chief humour is for the tyrant. I could play Hercules rarely or a part to tear a cat in to make all split. The raging rocks, the shivering shocks shall break the locks of prison gates, and Phoebus car shall shine from far and make and mar the foolish fates. This was lofty. Now, name the rest of the players. Francis Flute. This the is Ercles Vayner. A tyrant's vein, a lover is, is, is more condoling. Francis Flute, the bellows mender. Here, Peter Quince. You must take this bee on you. What is this bee? A, a wandering knight? She is the lady the Pyramus must love. Faith, let me not play a woman. I have a beard coming. That's as one. <laughs> you may play it in a mask. And you must speak as small as you will. And I may hide my <laughs> face. Let me play this be too. Oh, I'll yeah. speak in a monstrous <laughs> little voice. Thisdy! Thisdy! Ah, ah, ah. ah Pyramus, lover dear, thy, thy Thisbe dear, and lady dear. No, no, you must play Pyramus, flute, Thisbe. Well, proceed. Robin Starveling, the tailor. Here, Peter Quince. Robin Starveling, uh, you must play Thisbe's mother. 
Tom Snout the Tinker. Hey, Peter Quint. You, Pyramus' father, myself, Thisbe's father, Snug the joiner, the lion's part, and here I hope we have a play fitted. Have you the lion's part written? Pray you, if it be, give it me, for I am slow of study. You may do it extempore, uh, for it is nothing but roaring. Let me play the lion, too. I will roar that I will do any man's art good to him. I will roar that I will make the Duke say, let him roar again. Let him roar again. Let him roar again. And you should do it too terribly, that you would fright the Duchess and the ladies, that they would shriek, and that were enough to hang us all. That would hang us. Every mother's son. Well, I, I grant you, friends, if you should fright the ladies out of their wits, they would have no more discretion but to hang us. But... I will aggravate my voice so that I will roar you as gently as any sucking dove. I will roar you unto any nightingale. Hmm? <laughs> 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 No, you can play no part but Pyramus, for Pyramus is, is a sweet-faced man, a proper man, uh, as one shall meet on a summer's day. A lovely man, uh, a most gentleman-like man. Therefore, you must needs play Pyramus. Mm. Well, I will undertake it. Here, here are your parts, and I am to request you and desire you to con them by tomorrow night and meet me in the palace wood a mile without the town. By moonlight, there we will rehearse, for if we meet in the city, we shall be dogged by company and our devices known. I pray you, fail me not. We will meet, and there we may rehearse most obscenely and courageously. Take pains, A. Eh? Be perfect. Adieu. Good speed, fair clay fellow. Whither away? Call you me fair. At fair again, unsay. Demetrius loves your fair. Happy fair. Sickness is catching. Oh, a favour so yours would I catch. Fair Hermia, ere I go. My ear would catch your voice, my eye your eye, my tongue would catch your tongue, sweet melody. Oh, were the world mine, Demetrius being baited, the rest I give to be to you translated. Oh, teach me how you look, and with what art you sway the motion of Demetrius's heart. Demetrius! I frown upon him, yet he loves me still. <laughs> But your frowns could teach my smile such skill. I give him curses, yet he gives me love. Oh, that my prayers could such affection move. The more I hate, the more he follows me. The more I love, the more he hateth me. Oh, his folly, Helena, is no fault of mine. None but your beauty. Would that fault were mine? Take comfort. Be no more. Shall see my face. Lysander and myself will fly this close. <laughs> <laughs> Before the time I did Lysander see seemed Athens as a paradise to me. Oh, then, what graces in my love do dwell that he hath turned a heaven into a hell. <sighs> Helen? Mm -hmm. To you our minds we will unfold. Tomorrow night. When Phoebe doth behold her silvery visage in the watery glass, uh -huh. decking with liquid pearl that played the grass. <laughs> uh -huh. A time which lovers flights to still conceal. Mm -hmm. Through Athens gates we the fires to steal. And in the wood, where often you and I upon faint primrose beds were wont to lie, emptying our bosoms of their counsel sweet. There my Lysander and myself shall meet. And thence, from Athens, turn away our eyes to seek new friends and stranger companies. <laughs> Farewell, sweet playfellow. Pray thou for us, and good luck. Grant thee thy Demetrius. <sighs> Keep word, Lysander. 
We must starve our sight from lovers' food till morrow deep midnight. I will, my Hermia. <laughs> Helena, adieu. As you on him, Demetrius dotes on you. Or other some can be. Through Athens, I'm thought as fair as she. But what of that? Demetrius thinks not so. He will not know what all but he do know. I will go tell him of fair Hermia's flight. Then to the wood will he tomorrow night pursue her. And for this intelligence, if I have thanks, it is a dear expense. Here in me not to enrich my pain. And out of his sight, thither, I'm back again. How now, spirit? Whither wander you? Over hill, over dale, thorough bush, thorough briar, over park, over pale, thorough flood, thorough fire. I do wander everywhere, swifter than the moon's sphere. And I serve the fairy queen to dew her orbs upon the green. The cowslips tall her pensioners be, in their gold coat spots, you see? Those be rubies, fairy favours. In those freckles live their savours. Hmm. I must go seek some dewdrops here, and hang a pearl in every cowslip's ear. Farewell, thou lob of spirits. I'll be gone. Our queen and all our elves come here anon. The king doth keep his rebels here tonight. Take heed the queen come not within his sight. Oberon is passing fell and wrath, because that she is her attendant hath a lovely boy, stolen from an Indian king. She never had so sweet a changeling, but jealous Oberon would have the child, knight of his train, to trace the forest wild, but she perforce withholds the loved boy, crowns him with flowers, <laughs> makes him all her joy, and now they never meet. Not in grove or green, by fountain clear or spangled starlight sheen. But they do swear that all their elves, for fear, creep into acorn cups and hide them there. <laughs> Either I mistake your shape and making quite. Or else you are that shrewd and knavish sprite called Robin Goodfellow. 
Are not you he who frightens the maidens of the villagery? Uh, those that hobgoblin call and sweet puck. You do their work and they shall have good luck. Are you not he? Thou speakest the right. I am that merry wanderer of the night. Fairy, here comes Oberon. And here my mistress. Would that he were gone. Illness by moonlight brought down here. Fairies, skip hence. I have forsworn his bed and company. Tarry, rash wanton. Not I thy lord? Then I must be thy lady. Why art thou here? But that forsooth the bouncing Amazon, your buskin mistress and your warrior love, to Theseus must be wedded, and you come to give thy bed joy and prosperity. How oh, canst thou? <laughs> For shame, Titania. Glance at my credit with Hippolyta, knowing I know thy love for Theseus. These are the forgeries of jealousy. And never, since the middle summer, met we on hill, in dale, in forest, or mead, but with thy brawls thou hast disturbed our sport. Therefore the winds, piping to us in vain, as in revenge, have sucked up from the sea contagious fogs which falling in the land have every pelting river made so proud that they have overborne their continents. And thorough this distemperature we see the seasons alter. The spring, the summer, the childing autumn, angry winter change their wonted liveries, and the mazed world by their increase now knows not which is which. And this same progeny of evils comes from our debate, from our dissension, we are their parents and original. Do you amend it then? Mm -hmm. It lies in you. Why should Titania cross her Oberon? Mm -hmm. I do but beg a little changeling boy to be my henchman. Set your heart at rest. The fairy land buys not that boy from me. His mother was a votress of my order. But she, being mortal of that boy, did die, and for her sake do I rear up her boy, and for her sake I will not part with him. How long within this wood intend you staying? Perchance, till after Theseus' wedding day. If thou wilt patiently dance in our rounds and see our moonlight revels, go with us. If not, shun me, and I will spare your haunts. Give me that boy, and I will go with thee. Not for thy fairy kingdom. Fairies away. We shall charge down right if I longer stay. Go thy way. Thou shalt not from this grove I torment thee for this injury.
<laughs> My gentle puck. Come hither. Thou rememberest, since once I sat on a promontory and heard a mermaid on a dolphin's back uttering such dulcet and harmonious breath that the rude sea grew civil at her song and certain stars shot madly from their spheres to hear the sea maid's music. I remember. And at that time I saw but thou couldst not. Flying between the cold moon and the earth. Cupid. <laughs> All armed. A certain aim he took, but a fair vestal throned by the west. He loosed his love shaft smartly from his bow, as it should pierce a hundred thousand hearts. <laughs> but I might see young Cupid's fiery shaft, quenched in the chaste beams of the watery moon, and the imperial votaress passed on <laughs> in maiden meditation, fancy free, yet marked I where the bolt of Cupid fell. It fell upon a little western flower, before milk white, now purple with love's wound. <laughs> mm, fetch me that flower. The herb I showed thee once. The juice of it on sleeping eyelids laid make man or woman madly dote upon the next live creature that it sees. <laughs> <laughs> fetch me this herb, and be thou here again ere the Leviathan can swim a league. I'll put a girdle round about the earth in 40 minutes. <clears throat> Maybe 50. Having once this juice, I watch Titania while she is asleep and drop the liquor of it in her eye. The next thing waking she looks upon, be it on lion, wolf, or bear, or bull, on meddling monkey, or on busy ape. <laughs> she shall pursue it with a soul of love. And ere I do take this charm from off her sight as I can take it with another herb. I'll make her render up her boy to me. But who comes here? I am invisible. Yet I will overhear their conference. Where is Lysander and fair Hermia? Someone else spare the other spares me. Thou toldest me they were stolen unto this wood, huh? And here am I, and wood within this wood, because I cannot meet my Hermia. Hence get thee gone, and follow me no more. Oh, you draw me, you hard-hearted adamant. And yet you draw not iron, for my heart is true as steel. Ah, Demetrius, I am your spaniel. The more you beat me, I will fawn on you. Oh, use me as you use your spaniel. Burn me, strike me, lose me, but give me leave, unworthy as I am, to follow you. What worse a place can I beg in your love, and yet a place of high respect for me, than to be used as you use your dog? Tempt not too much the hatred of my spirit, for I am sick when I do look on thee. And I am sick when I look not on you. You do impeach your modesty too much. To leave the city and commit yourself into the hands of one that loves you not. To trust the opportunity of night and the, the ill counsel of a desert place. With the rich worth of your virginity. 
Your virtue is my privilege, for that it is not night when I do see your face, therefore I think I am not in the night, nor doth this wood lack worlds of company, for you in my respect are all the world, so how can it be said I am alone when all the world is here to look on me? I will not stay thy questions, let me go! Or if thou follow me, do not believe, but I shall do the mischief in the wood. I, in the temple, in the town, the field, you do me mischief. By Demetrius, your wrongs do set a scandal on my sex. We cannot fight for love as men may do. We should be wooed. And we're not made to woo. I'll follow thee and make a heaven of hell to die upon the hand I love so well. That's thou the flower there. Welcome, wanderer. Aye, there it is. I pray thee, give it me. I know a bank where the wild thyme blows, where oxlips and the nodding violet grows. Quite o'er canopied with luscious woodbine, with sweet musk roses and with eglantine. There sleeps Titania, sometime of the night, lulled in these flowers with dances and delight. And there the snake throws her in her skin, weed wide enough. To wrap a fairy in. <laughs> and with this juice, I'll streak her eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. <laughs> Here, take thou some of it and seek through this grove. A sweet Athenian lady is in love with a disdainful youth. A sweet Athenian lady is in love. With a disdainful, with a disdainful youth. Youth. Yes. Anoint his eyes, but do it. The next thing he espies may be the lady. Anoint his eyes, but do it when the next thing he espies may, may be, be the, the lady. lady. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You'll know the man by the Athenian garments he hath on. Uh, affect it with some care that he may prove more fond of her than she upon her love. <laughs> and look thou meet me at the first cockcrow. Fear not, my lord. Your servant shall do so. <laughs> Fair love, you faint with wandering in the wood. And to speak troth, I have forgot our way. Oh. Well, rest us, Hermia, if you think it good, and tarry for the comfort of the day. Be it so, Lysander. Find you out of bed, for I have hung this bank across my head. Find me out of bed? <laughs> one turf shall serve as pillow for us both. One heart, one bed, two bosoms, and one truck. <laughs> Nay, good Lysander. For my sake, my dear, lie further off yet. Do not lie so near. I'll take the scent sweet of my innocence. Love takes the meaning in love's conference. Then. By your side, no bedroom me deny. For lying so, Hermia, I do not lie. Mm, Lysander riddles very prettily. Now, much beshrew my manners and my pride, if Hermia meant to say Lysander lied. But gentle friend, for love and courtesy, lie further oh. off. In human modesty, such separation, as may well be said, becomes a virtuous bachelor and a maid. So far be distant. Good night, sweet friend. Thy love ne'er alter till thy sweet life end. Amen. Amen to that fair prayer, say I. And then end life when I end loyalty. Here is my bed. Sleep give thee all his rest. What thou 
cease to let us wake. Do it for thy true love take. Love and languish for his sake, be it ounce or cat or bear. Pard? Or boar with bristled hair. In thy eye that shall appear, when thou wakest, it is thy Some vile thing is near. Through the forest have I gone, but Athenian found I none, on whose eyes I might approve this flower's force of stirring love. Night and silence. Who is here? Needs of. Athens he doth wear. This is he, my master said, despised the Athenian maid. And there's the maiden. Sleeping sound on the dank and dirty ground. It's pretty so. She durst not lie near this lack love, this kill courtesy. Sure. Upon my eyes I throw all the power this charm doth owe. When thou wakest, let love forbid sleep his seat on thy eyelid. So awake when I am gone, for I must now to Oberon. is Hermia, wheresoe'er she lies. She hath blessed and attractive eyes. But who's here? Lysander, on the ground. Dead or asleep. I see no blood, no wound. Lysander, if you live, good sir, awake. And run through fire will I for thy sweet sake. Huh? Transparent Helena. Nature shows art that through thy bosom makes me see thy heart. Where is Demetrius? Oh, how fit a word is that vile name to perish on my sword. <laughs> Do not say so, Lysander. Say not so. Lord, though we love your Hermia. Lord, what though? Yet Hermia still loves you, then be content. No, I do repent the tedious minutes that with her I spent, not Hermia. For Helena I love. Hmm? Who will not change a raven for a dove? The will of man is by his reason swayed, and reason says you are the worthier maid. <sighs> Wherefore was I to this keen mockery born? When, at your hands, did I deserve the scorn? Is it not enough, is it not enough, young man, that I did never, no, nor never can deserve a sweet look from Demetrius' eye? But you must flout my insufficiency. Good truth, you do me wrong. Good suit you do, in such disdainful manner me to woo. Oh, that a lady of one man refused should therefore by another be abused. <laughs> She sees not harm here. Hermia, sleep thou there, and never mayest thou come Lysander near. And all my powers, address your love and might to honor Helen and to be her knight. We 
Well met. Oh. This green plot shall be our stage. Uh, this hawthorn bush our tiring house. And we will do it in action as we will do it before the Duke. Bit of quince. What sayest thou, Bully Bottom? There are things in this comedy of Pyramus and Thisbe that will never please. First, Pyramus must draw a sword to... Uh. First, Pyramus must draw a sword to kill himself, which the ladies cannot abide. Uh. I want to see that. My lark in a parlour's fair. Hmm? <laughs> I believe we must leave the killing out after all this done. <laughs> Not a wit. I have a device to make all well. Write me a prologue. And let that prologue seem to say that we will, we will do no harm with our swords and that Pyramus is not killed indeed. And, for the more better assurance, tell him that I, Pyramus, am not Pyramus, but Bottom the Weaver. This will put them out of fear. Well, we shall have such a prologue. Will not the ladies be afraid of the lion? I fear it, I promise. <sighs> Masters, you ought to consider with yourselves to bring him. <laughs> God shield us! A, a lion among ladies is a most dreadful thing. For there is no more fearful wildfowl than your lion living. We ought to look to it. Oh, therefore another prologue must tell he's not a lion. Nay, you must name his name and half his face must be seen through the lion's neck. And there indeed, let him name his name and tell him plainly he is Snug the Joiner. Well, it shall be so. Come, every mother's son, and rehearse your parts. Uh, Pyramus, you begin, and when you've spoken your speech, enter into that break, and everyone according to his cue. What hemp and homespuns have we swaggering here, so near the cradle of the Fairy Queen? What a play toward. I'll be an auditor. An act to do, perhaps, if I see cause. Pyramus, speak. A Thisbe, stand forth. Thisbe, the flowers of odious save us. Odors. Odors save us, sweet. So hath thy breath, thy dearest Thisbe, dear. But hark, a voice. Stay thou but ere a while, and by and by I will to thee appear. The stranger Pyramus than air played here. Or oh, must I speak now? Marry must you, uh, for you must understand. He goes but to see a voice he has heard and is come again. Most radiant spirit. Most radiant Pyramus. Most lily white of you. A colour like the red rose of triumphant bright. Most briskly juvenile and eek, most lovely Jew. A true, true horse, and yet will never tire. I'll meet thee, Pyramus, in Ninny's tomb. Ninus too, man, Ninus too. But you must not speak that yet. You speak all your part at once, cues and all. Pyramus, stand forth. Your cue is past. It is never tire. Oh. <laughs> if I were fair, Thisbe, I would only dine. We are haunted! Oh, Master's life! Master's help! help. <laughs> oh, I see their knavery. This is to make an ass of me to fright me if they could. Oh, well, I will walk up and down here, and I will sing. Unless you'll hear I'm not afraid. The oozle cock, so black of hue, with orange tawny bill, the throstle with his note so true, the wren with little quill. <laughs> I may 
life of Pepe. <laughs> what a dream was here. Oh, my son, look how I do quake with fear. Methought a serpent eat my heart away, and you sat smiling at his cruel prey. Lysander? Not removed. Lysander! Lord! The finch, the sparrow, and the lark. Angel wakes me from my flowery bed. Who dare not answer? I pray thee, gentle mortal, sing again. For mine ear is much enamored of thy note. So is mine eye enthralled to thy shape. And thy fair virtue's force perforce doth move me on first view to say, to swear. I love thee. Well, Methinks, mistress, you should have little reason for that, and to say the truth. <laughs> reason and love hold little company together nowadays. Oh, thou art as wise as thou art beautiful. Oh, not so neither. But if I had wit enough to get out of this wood, I would have enough to serve mine own yeah. turn. Do not desire to go. Thou shalt remain here, whether thou wilt or no. I am a spirit of no common rate. The summer still doth tend upon my state, and I do love thee. Therefore go with me. I'll give thee fairies to attend on thee, and they shall fetch thee jewels from the deep and sing while thou unpressed flowers dost sleep. And I shall purge thy mortal grossness so that thou shalt like an airy spirit go. Peas blossom, cobweb, moth and mustard seed. Ready, and I. And I. And I. Where Where we go? Go? Be kind and courteous to this gentleman. Nod in his walks and gamble in his eyes. Feed him with apricots and dewberries, with purple grapes, green figs and mulberries. The honeybug steal from the humble bees. Nod to him elves and do him courtesy. Hail, mortal. Hail. Hail, hail. I cry your worship's mercy. Heartily, I, I, I beseech your worship's name. Cobweb. Uh, well, I shall desire you of more acquaintance, Cobweb. If I cut my finger, I shall make bold with you. <laughs> uh, um, your name? Peas Blossom. Oh, I pray you. Commend me to Mistress Squash, your mother, and Master Peas Cod, your father. <laughs> Peas Blossom, I shall desire you of more acquaintance too. Your name, I beseech you. Mustard Seed. Ah, oh, Mustard Seed. Mm. I know thy patience well. That same cowardly giant like Oxby hath devoured <laughs> many a man of my house. I promise you, your kindred hath made my eyes water there now. <laughs> I shall desire you of more acquaintance too, Mustard Seed. Come now, lead into my bower. The moon, methinks, looks with a watery eye. And when she weeps, weeps every little flower, lamenting some and foresaid chastity. Tie up my lover's tongue and bring him silently. I wonder if Titania be awake. Then what it was that next came in her eye which he must dote on in extremity. Here comes my messenger. Dull and sleep an hour. <laughs> Rude mechanicals. To rehearse a play. Mm. <laughs> I left an, 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 an ass's gnaw. Ass? I fix it on his head. An ass's gnaw. I fix it on his head. Left sweet Pyramus translated there. Mm? Left sweet. Pyramus. Pyramus? Translated there. Oh, yeah. now, my spirit, what might rule now about this haunted grove? Huh? My mistress with a monster 
is in love. <laughs> uh, when in that moment, so it came to pass, Titania waked and straight away loved an ass. Oh, an ass? An ass. <laughs> an ass. An ass. <laughs> oh. oh, this falls out better than I could devise. But hast thou yet latched the Athenian's eyes with the love juice as I did bid thee do? I took him sleeping, that is finished too. <laughs> and the Athenian woman by his side, that when he waked, of course, she must be eyed. <laughs> oh, stand close. This is the same Athenian. This is the woman, but not this the man. This is not the woman. But not this the man? The man. Not this, the man. <sighs> now I but chide, but I should use thee worse, for thou, I fear, hast given me cause to curse. If thou hast slain Lysander in his sleep, the sun was not so true unto the day as he to me. Would he have stolen away from sleeping, Hermia? It cannot be but thou hast murdered him. So should a murderer look so dead, so grim. So should the murdered look, and so should I, pierced through the heart with your stern cruelty. Yet you, the murderer, look, look as bright, as clear as yonder Venus in her glimmering sphere. What is this to my Lysander? Where is he? Good Demetrius, will thou give him me? I'd rather give his carcass my hounds. Ooh. Out, dog. Out, cur, thou hast driven me past the bounds of maiden's patience. Hast thou slain him then? Henceforth be never numbered among men. You spend your passion on a misprized mood. I'm not guilty of Lysander's blood, nor is he dead. For aught that I can tell. I pray thee, tell me then that he is well. And if I could, what should I get there for? No! Never to see me more. And from thy hated presence part I so see me no more. Whether he be dead or no. Oh, there was no following her in this fierce vein. Here, therefore, for a while I will remain. Ah, so sorrow's heaviness doth heavier grow, for depth that bankrupt sleep doth sorrow owe. Which now, in some slight measure, it will pay. If for his tender here I make some stay. <laughs> what hast thou done? Hmm? Thou hast mistaken quite, and laid the love juice in some true love sight. Of thy misprision must perforce ensue some true love, turned and not a false, turned true. About the wood, go, swifter than the wind, and Helena of Athens look thou find. Helena of Athens look thou find? Or oh, fancy sick she is and pale of cheer with sighs of love that cost the fresh blood dear. By some illusion, see thou bring her here. I'll charm his eyes against she do appear. I go, I go. Look how I go, swifter than an arrow from the Tartar's bow. Flower of this purple dye, hit with Cupid's archery. Sink in apple of his eye, when his love he doth espy. Let her shine as gloriously as Venus of the sky, when thou wakest, when she be by. Pick up a remedy. Captain of our fairy band, Helena is here at hand, with the youth mistook by me, pleading for a lover's fee. Shall we there fair pageant see? Lord, what fools these mortals be. Mm, stand aside. The noise they make will cause Demetrius to awake. Then will two at once, once woo one. one. <laughs> <laughs>
Why should you think that I should ruin scorn? Scorn and derision never come in tears. Look, when I vow, I weep. Aww. And vows so born in the nativity, all truth appears. These vows are Hermia's. Will you give her over? I had no judgment when to her I swore. Nor none in my mind. Now you give her over. Demetrius loves her, and he loves not you. Oh, oh Helena. Goddess nymph, perfect divine, to what my love shall I compare thine eye? <laughs> Her crystal is muddy, Her ripening showed thy lips, those kissing cherries tempting grow, that pure congealed white, I tore as snow, fanned with the eastern wind, turns to a crow. When thou holdest up thy hand, let me kiss, <laughs> this princess of pure white, the seal of I'll bite! Oh, hell! I see you are all bent to set against me for your merriment. Can you not hate me, as I know you do, but you must join in souls to mock me too? If you were men, as men you are in show, you would not use a gentle lady so. You are both rivals and love Hermia, and now both rivals to mock Helena! <laughs> a twin exploit! Oh, manly enterprise to conjure up tears in a poor maid's eyes with your derision. None of noble sort would so offend a virgin and extort a poor soul's patience all to make you sport. You are unkind, Demetrius, be not so, for you love Hermia. This you know I know and hear. With all good will, with all my heart, in Hermia's love, I yield you up my part. And yours of Helen to me bequeath, <laughs> whom I do love and will do to my death. Never did mockers waste more idle breath. Thy sander keep thy Hermia, I will none. Fair I loved her, all that love is gone. My heart to her, but his guess why sojourned, and now to Helen! And there to remain. Helen, it is not so. Oh, disparage not the faith thou dost not know, lest to thy peril abide it dear! Look. Where thy love comes yonder is thy dear. Thou art not by mine eye, Lysander, found mine ear. I thank it brought me to thy sand, for why kindly dost thou leave me so? Why should he stay, whom love doth press to go? Love could press Lysander from my side. Thou Lysander's love, that would not let him bide, fair Helena, who more engilds the night than all you fiery o's and eyes of light. Why seekest thou me? Could not this make thee know the hate I bear thee made me leave thee so? <laughs> you speak not as you think, it cannot be. Oh! She is one of this confederacy. No, I perceive they have conjoined all three to fashion this false sport in spite of me. Injurious Hermia, most ungrateful maid, have you conspired? Have you with these contrived to bait me with this foul derision? <laughs> it is not friendly. It is not maidenly. Our sex, as well as I may charge you for it, though I alone do feel the injury. I am amazed at your passionate words. I scorn you not. <laughs> It seems that you scorn me. <laughs> Have you not set Lysander, as in scorn, to follow me and praise my eyes and face and made your other love, Demetrius, who even now did spurn me with his foot to call me goddess, nymph, divine and rare, precious, celestial? Goddess, nymph, divine and rare. Oh, wherefore speaks he thus to her he hates? And wherefore doth Lysander deny your love so rich within his soul and tender me, forsooth, affection, but by your setting on, by your consent? No, my love, and tender you, I, I understand not what you mean by that. I it. do! Persevere, counterfeit sad looks, make mouths upon me when I turn my back, wink at each other, hold the sweet jest up. This sport, well carried, shall be chronicled. If you had any pity, grace, or manners, you would not make me such an argument. But fare thee well. It is partly my own fault, which death or absence soon shall remedy. Stay, gentle Helena. Hear my excuse, my love, my life, my soul, fair Helena. Excellent! I do not scorn her so. I can compel. Thou canst compel no more than she and she. Some sport! Helen, I love thee. By my life, I do. I say I love thee more than he can do. Thou sayest so true, prove it to him. Quick, come! I stand away to the temple then. Away you need no kiss. And what thou canst? Now, for a while, be let me know. By my life. I never did desire to see thee more. Therefore, 
be out of hope, of question, of doubt. Be certain, nothing true it is, no chest that I do hate thee and love Helena. Blossoming thief of love, what? Have you come by night and stolen my love's heart from him? Have you no modesty? No maiden shame? No touch of bashfulness? <laughs> you puppet, you! Ay, that way goes the game! Now I perceive that she hath made compare between us statues. She hath urged her height, and with her tall passage, her height was true. She hath prevailed with him! Why are you going so high as see? Because I am Sondra Wobbish! Thou painted maple, speak! I am not yet so low, but that my nails can reach unto thy heart! Because they are somewhat lower than myself! Be not afraid. She shall not harm thee, Helena. No, sir, she shall not, though you take her part. You minimus of hindering, not make grass, you beard, you acorn. You are too officious in her behalf that scorns your services. Let her alone and speak not of Helena. Take not her part. <laughs> For if thou dost intend never so little show of love there, thou shalt abide. Go! <laughs> now she holds me not. Follow, if thou darest to try his right of mine, or thine is most in Helena. Follow, nay! I'll go with thee, cheek by jowl! You, mistress, hold this coil as long of you. Nay, go not back to Athens. I will not trust you, I. Nor longer stay in your cursed company. Your hands than mine are quicker for a fray. My legs are longer, though, to run away. I am amazed. I know not what to say. This is thy negligence. Mm, still thou mistakest, eh? or else commits thy knaveries willfully. Believe me, King of Shadows, I mistook. Mm. Did you not tell me I would know the man by the Athenian garment he had on? Yes. And so far, then blameless proves my enterprise that I have anointed an Athenian's eyes. And so far, am I glad it so did sort, as this their jangling, I do esteem a sport. Does cease these lovers seek a place to fight? I, therefore, Robin, overcast the night. The starry welkin cover thou anon with drooping fog, as black as Acheron, and lead these testy rivals so astray as one come not within the other's way, till all their brows, death counterfeiting sleep, with leaden legs and batty wings doth creep. Thou, proud Demetrius, speak thou now. Here, villain, drawn and ready. Where art thou? Lysander, speak again. I will be with thee straight. Follow me to plainer ground. Run away, thou coward. Art thou fled? Speak. Thou coward, art thou bragging to the stars, telling the bushes that thou lookest for war and wilt not come? She goes before me and still dares me on. 
and I come where he calls, and he is gone. Come, Requiem, come. <sighs> that fallen am I in dark, uneven way, and here will rest me. Come, thou gentle day, for if but once thou show me thy grey light, I'll find Demetrius and revenge this spite. Come hither, I am here. Nay, then thou mockest me. Oh, faintness constraineth me. But to measure out my length on this oh, cold bed. night. Abate thy hour. Say comforts from the east. That I may back to Athens by daylight from these that my poor company detest. And sleep that sometimes shuts up sorrow's eye. Steal me a while from my own company. Yet but three. Here she comes, cursed and sad. Cupid is a knavish lad, thus to make poor females mad. Dabbled with the dew and torn with briars, I can no further crawl. No further go. My legs will keep no pace with my desires. Till the breakup day. <sighs> Heaven shield Lysander. He is the mean and fray. On the ground sleep sound. I'll apply to your eye. Gentle lover remedy. When thou wakest, thou takest true delight in the sight of thy former lover's eye. And the country proverb known that every man should take his own in your waking shall be shown. Jack shall have Jill, naught shall go ill, and the man shall have his mare again. Ugh. And all shall be well. to the barbers. Mm. Methinks I'm marvellous airy about the face. Mm. I am such a tender ass. Mm. My hair do but tickle me. <laughs> I must scratch. Or oh, tell me, my love, what thou desirest to eat. Truly. Peck of provender. Oh, I could munch your good dry oats. Methinks I have a great desire to a bottle of hay. Good hay. Sweet hay hath no fellow. I have a venturous fairy that will fetch thee new nuts. Am I a fire or Noria? Noria manai, Noria manana, Noria manana, I shall kananana. My own She is mine. I may dispose of her, which shall be either to this gentleman or to her death. According to our law, 
immediately provided in that case. So does the woodbine, the sweet honeysuckle, gently entwist. The female ivy so in the rings of barky things. Welcome, good Robin. Seest thou this sweet sight? Her dotage now I do begin to pity. I will undo this hateful imperfection of her eyes. And, uh, gentle Puck, take this transformed scalp from off the head of this Athenian swain, that he awaking when the others do may all to Athens back again repair, and think no more of this night's accidents than as the fierce vexation of a dream. But first. I will release the Fairy Queen. Be as thou was wont to be. See as thou was wont to see. Now, my Titania, wake. Visions have I seen. They thought I was enamored of an ass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there lies your love. <laughs> How came these things to pass? Silence a while. Robin, take off this head. Now when thou wakest with thine own fool's eyes, peep. <laughs> then come, my queen, take hands with me, and rock the ground, <laughs> let these sleepers be. Thou and I are new in amity, and tomorrow midnight dance we solemnly in Duke Theseus' house triumphantly, <laughs> and bless it to all fair prosperity. Tender mark, I do hear the morning lark. Then, my queen, in silent sad, trip we after the nightshade. We the globe can compass soon, swifter than the wandering moon. Come, my lord, and in our flight, tell me how it came this night that I sleeping here was found with these mortals on the ground. Good morrow, friends. Pardon, my lord. I pray you all stand up. I know you two are rival enemies. How comes this gentle concord in a world? My lord, I shall reply amazedly. Half sleep, half waking, but as yet, I swear I cannot truly say how I came here. And now do I bethink me. So it is, I came with Hermia hither. Her intent was to be gone from Athens, where we might, without the peril of the Athenian law, Enough, enough, my lord! You have enough! I beg the law, the law upon his head! 
they would have stolen away. They would, Demetrius. My lord, I know not by what power, but by some power it is. My love to Hermia melted as the snow. The object and the pleasure of mine eye is only Helena. To her was I betrothed ere I saw Hermia, but like in sickness did I loathe this food. But as in health, came to my natural taste. Now, I do wish it, love it, and long for it, and will forevermore be true to it. Aegeus, I will overbear your will. For in the temple, by and by, with us, these couples shall eternally be knit. <laughs> Away with us to Athens! My cucumbers call me. And I will answer. My next is most fair, Pyramus. <sighs> Bit of quince. Flew the bellows bender. Stout the tinker. Starfleet. Got to my life. Stolen and left me asleep. I have had a most rare vision. I have had a dream past the wit of man to say what dream it was. Man is but an ass if you go about to expound this dream. Me thought I was. There is no man can sell one. Me thought I was. And me thought I had. But man is but a patch fool if he will offer to say what me thought I had. The eye of man hath not heard. The ear of man hath not seen. Man's hand is not able to taste his. His tongue to conceive, no, his heart to report what my dream was. It is strange, my thesis, that these men speak of. More strange than true. I never may believe these antique fables, nor these fairy toys. Lovers and madmen, and such seething brains, such shaping fantasies that apprehend more than cool reason ever comprehends. The thrice three muses, <laughs> mourning for the death of learning, late deceased in buggery, beggary. That is some satire, keen and critical, not sorting with a nuptial ceremony. Mm. But, uh, Tedious brief scene of young Pyramus and his love is <laughs> very tragical mirth. Merry and tragical. Tedious and brief. That is hot ice and and wondrous strange snow. How shall we find the concord of this discord? A play there is, my lord, some ten words long, which is as brief as I've known a play. For by being ten words, my lord, it is too long, <laughs> which makes it tedious. For in all the play there is not one word apt, one player fitted. <laughs> and it's <laughs> tragical, my lord, it is. <laughs> For Pyramus there, in it, kill himself. Which, well, I must confess, made my eyes water. But more merry tears, the, the passion of loud laughter never shed. <laughs> What are they that to play it? Oh, Hard-handed men that uh, work in Athens here, which have never laboured in their minds till now, and now have toiled there 
unbreathed memories with the same play against your nuptial. And we will hear it. No, no, it's not for you. For I have heard it over and it is nothing, nothing in the world, unless you can find sport in their intense, extremely stretched and conned with cruel pain, it, it to do you service. I will hear that play. For never anything is amiss when simpleness and duty tender it. Go, bring them in. Have you been to Bottom's home yet? Has he come home? He cannot be heard of. Out of doubt, he's transported. Ah, masters, the Duke is coming from the temple. Oh. And there is two or three lords and ladies more married. Oh. If our sport had gone forward, we had all been made men. <laughs> Where are these lads? Where are these hearts? Where are these lads? Where are these hearts? <laughs> 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 Not a word of me. All I will tell you is that the Duke hath dined. Get your apparel together. Meet presently at the palace. Every man look over his part for the short and the long is. The short and the long is? Our play is preferred. <laughs> No more words. Away! Go! Away! Come on! Joy, gentle friends. Joy and fresh days of love accompany your hearts. The joy. Pyramus and Thisbe. Some rebels are in hand. Where is Pyramus and Thisbe? Fell astray! <laughs> <laughs> Here, <coughs> mighty Theseus. What abridgment have you for us this evening? The battle with the centaurs. <laughs> Quick battle. <laughs> Illustrate. How shall we beguile the lazy time, if not with some delight? Oh! So please, Your Grace, In this same interlude, it doth befall that I once snap by name present a wall. And such a wall as I would have you think that had in it a crannied hole. Or chink, through which the lovers, Pyramus and Thisbe, did whisper often very secretly. And this, the cranny here, right and sinister, through which the fearful lovers are to whisper. Would you desire lime and hair to speak better? O oh, Grimlock Knight, O oh, Knight with hue so black, O oh, Knight which ever art when day is not, O oh, night, O oh, night, alack, 
a lack, a lack. I fear my fit this beast's promise is forgot, but thou, O oh wall, O oh sweet and lovely wall, that standest between her father's ground and mine. O oh wall, O oh wall, O oh sweet and lovely wall, show me thy chink to blink through with mine eyne. Thanks, courteous wall. Job shield thee well for this. But what see I? No Thisbe do I see. Oh, wicked wall, through whom I see no bliss. Oi. Cursed be thy stones for thus deceiving me. The wall, methinks, being sensible, should curse again. Yonder she comes. <clears throat> A wall? Full often hast thou heard my moans for parting my fair Pyramus and me. My cherry lips and have often kissed thy stones. Thy stones, with hair and lime knit up in thee. I see a voice. Thou will I to the chink to spy, and I can hear my Thisbe's face. Thisbe! My love thou art, my love, I think. Think what thou wilt, I am thy lover's grace. Oh, kiss me through the hole of this vile wall. Oh. I kiss the wall's hole and not thy lips at all. Well, thou at Ninny's tomb meet me straight away. Ninus tomb. Tide life, tide dare. I come without delay. This is the silliest stuff that ever I heard. You ladies, you... You ladies, you whose gentle hearts do fear the smallest monstrous mouse that creeps on floor, may now perchance both quake and tremble here when lion rough in wildest rage doth roar. <laughs> then know that I, one snug the joiner, am a lion fell. A very gentle beast, of a good conscience. This lantern doth the hornet moon present. Should have worn the horns on his head. <laughs> this lantern doth the hornet moon present. Myself, the man, I in the moon. This is the greatest error of them all. The man should be put into the lantern. How is it else the man in the moon? All I have to say is to tell you that this lantern is the moon. Myself, the man in the moon. This thorn bush, my thorn bush, and this dog, my dog. I thank thee for thy sunny beams. I thank thee, moon, for shining now so bright. For by thy gracious golden glittering gleams, I trust to take of truest this be sight, but stay, oh, spite. But mark, poor knight, what dreadful dole is here. <sighs> Eyes, do you see? Oh, can it be? Oh, dainty duck, oh dear, thy mantle, good what? Stained with blood? 
Approach ye Fury's spell! Oh, fates, come, come! Cut thread and thrum! Quail, cross, conclude, and <laughs> This passion and the death of a dear friend would go near to make a man look sad. Be shrew my heart, but I pity the man. <laughs> Since Lion Vile hath here deflowered, my dear, which is. No, no. Which was the fairest dame that lived, that loved, that liked, that looked with cheer. Come, tears confound. Outsword and wound the pap of Permus. I, that left pap, where the heart doth hop. Thus die I. Thus. 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 Now am I dead, now am I fled. My soul is in the sky. Tongue, lose thy light. Moon, take thy flight. Now die, die. Die! With the help of a surgeon, he might yet recover. Asleep, my love? What? Dead, my dove? A tomb must cover his sweet eyes. These my lips. This cherry nose. These yellow cowslip cheeks are gone. Tongue, not a word. Come. Trusty sword. Come, blade. My breast in brew. Farewell, friend. Does this be end? Adieu. 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 Moonshine and Lion are left to bury the dead. Aye. And Wall, too. No! No! I assure that the Wall is down that parted their fathers. Would it please you to see an uh, epilogue? No! Epilogue, I pray you! For your play needs no excuse. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Hand in hand, with fairy grace, we will love and bless this place. So shall all the couples, three, hmm. ever true in loving me.
shadows have offended. Think but this, and all is mended, that you have but slumbered here, while all these visions did appear, and this weak and idle theme no more yielding than a dream. Gentles, do not reprehend. If you pardon, we will mend. And as I am an honest puck, if we have unearned luck now to escape the serpent's tongue, we will make amends here long. Else the puck a liar call. So good night unto you all. Once again